Led Zeppelin overcomes a few obstacles and releases their final studio album while also embracing a new sound. The album is 1979's In Through the Outdoor. We'll be right back on the other side of this little message. Get ready for the 3324 podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 podcast, The Fun House of Music <laughs> and Movie Podcast. Indeed. Like House of Mirrors. <laughs> No, do we have to? I should have had pink in the background. This yeah. used to be my fun house. Yeah, there you okay. go. <laughs> that's it. It's, that's what this place is. Sometimes it's an asylum. Uh, oh man, yeah, yeah. Sometimes God. it's oh. uh, sometimes it's like Shawshank Prison. Sometimes it's like the uh, the hospital that well, Jack Nicholson was in in Cuckoo's Nest. I wouldn't go that sometimes far, but I'm, 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 sometimes it's a sometimes it's a <laughs> no. We well, we always have fun. It, it, I'd it, like to it, think like Shaw, when we have a lot of guests on, it gets like Shawshank. It gets a little out of control. It could be like, you know, <laughs> new fish, new fish. <laughs> reel it in, reel it in. <laughs> but when it's Eric and I, it's a little more calmer. So if you're, so if you're a calmer. That's why I look forward to the music. Stuff that, yeah, that's, you know. You, you're, you're I think we kind of gave up on doing movies, just the two of us. I don't know why, but it's just, it's just, I don't know. There's just maybe too much to talk about or. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just it's very involved. We like getting other people's it seems like perspectives. Guests want, well, well, what it is yeah. though, I think, I think we we have more guests that are interested in guesting on movie episodes, yeah, than on music episodes. So we kind of true, yeah, music's like, more. Yeah, we kind of squeegee them over to all the movie episodes, and we just kind of like, <laughs> you know, which is a nice change of pace. It's Why did like, I just have an image are, of Rocky and Rocky too, like you know, sweeping all the all the meat? scraps yeah. into the fucking <laughs> more like the, guy in the, the old guy in the aviators like is that Odie? does that guy work for me I'm like yeah i think his name is nick yeah yeah the old guys sweet sweeping and staring at at howard hughes you know <laughs> so that, that's what it's more like <laughs> so we're trying to say that we're fire him fire him, howard. fire him and make sure they use wet broom <laughs> i don't want anybody lawsuits from dust <laughs> Oh, goodness. Here we go. <laughs> oh, all right. That's what it's more like. But this is actually a music episode. So let's yeah. uh, transition into that. Why don't we? Although this group did release a film, oddly enough. So they, they yeah. had a, a feature okay. film. Yep. So we're talking about Into the Outdoor from Led Zeppelin. Uh, let's go right into the stats. Released in August of 1979. Produced as all the albums were by Jimmy Page. There was only one single released on this album, which was Fool in the Rain. It hit number 21. Mm-hmm. Hit number one on Billboard. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. Times Platinum. Um, there was a very interesting thing that happened in October and November of 1979 with Led Zeppelin and their albums. You want to you wanna venture a guess? The only hint I can give you and it'll call back to another episode is Chicago. And I don't know if you're going to remember that. Uh, well, I mean, I'm putting you on the spot. I know. I don't know. I don't the How dare you? I know there was something, some stuff going on side, but no, this is about their albums specifically in October and November of 1979. Okay. Yeah. Every single Led Zeppelin album was on the charts. Okay. Simultaneously. Okay. Which hadn't happened since Physical Graffiti. And then in November of 1979, every single album was was on the charts. Well, you're and the chart. Happened, remember, I don't know if you remember in our in our Chicago episode, I think we talked about like like after their fourth album had come out or something, all the out al- all the other albums were still on the charts. That's right. Okay. Yep. This is their right. whole goddamn discography <laughs> was on the chart in, in, in October, November 79 everything was was charted you know what it makes perfect sense That's actually you know you're you are you know you're the guy who you know you love the charts you love char- you know it. like charting that stuff <laughs> um as it were but uh but it makes perfect sense because that you know 79 when this album came out that's when i got into zeppelin you know and of course like you said i mean there's a lot a lot of that stuff was being still being played on the radio 
So yeah, it makes perfect sense that they would, that I would hear not only the brand new stuff, but just like going, it wasn't that hard to go back and and be other albums on the, on the album charts. Like that's simultaneous. Especially, you know, and again, it's not like we're not going to besmirch Led Zeppelin, but it's not like it's McCartney or Elton John. I mean, they, of course Mm -hmm. they have a, a, a massive career, but it's not like these guys were churning out number one hits, right? That was radio friendly. It was like they're true. They, they were a segment of rock and roll. FM. Yeah. Yeah. They were, you know, so, so for me that, that statistic is even more like uh, astounding. Hmm. You know, it's not like, so they could, uh, you Michael couldn't say Jackson, that about, you, know? you couldn't say that about the Beatles or the doors back in the day. We, I mean, the doors of, of the, oh, no, not of all the albums being on the chart at the same time. No, they would come, they would dominate. Okay. And then fall off then the next and then one. Just fall off. Okay. But in yeah. October of November, all that's wild. You know, all their albums were on the charts, which is pretty amazing. That's and crazy. considering that, you know, the, the album before this was um the soundtrack to the song Remains the Same, which came out in seventy six. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. also their their last studio album before this, which was Presence, came out in seventy six. Mm-hmm. So there's it. So you know, before we before we go go, go there, um when we do, you know, we we have a few artists that we've have visited second episodes with. Yeah, that's a handful, and we're going to do more. But but the reason why we do that, and and Eric and I always discuss it, is we want it when we do a, another album by an artist, we want something that's really a contrast. Yeah, you know, we don't want to do like oh, just an, another album that sound. You know, we don't want to do Led Zeppelin and Led Zeppelin two or Zeppelin two and Zeppelin four. Right. Right. You know, yeah. We, you know, when we want to explore an, a, a second release by by an artist, we want to have that contrast, you know. Um, and this one certainly is that, you know, our of the first Zeppelin episode we did was Zeppelin two, mm-hmm. and this one is certainly a a <laughs> yeah very different. <laughs> I'll say Led Zeppelin, and and there's a couple of reasons for that, and there's a lot of questions I'd like us to explore, or a lot of a lot of what ifs that I'd like us to explore. So okay. Going back to 1976, Presence was their was their last studio album. Before that, mm-hmm. um, a lot of things happened in in the three years, the interve- or the intervening two years, because 78 they started recording this. Uh, Robert Plant's son Carrick, yes, died. Died. Yep. Um, that was 77, I yeah, believe. Only yeah. five years old. He was a baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, stomach. He had some type of a stomach virus, mm-hmm. um, and passed away. Beautiful child too. If you go look at photos, uh Long, yeah, these, long, cur- long, curly hair. Yeah, these rock stars, uh, man, they know how to churn out good-looking oh, kids. Clapton's son Connor was, uh, yeah, was, was a oh, gorgeous kid yeah. too. Carrick yeah. Plant was such a, yeah. a great-looking boy, like really, yeah. he, I, 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 uh, uh, such a flower child, such a hippie child. Oh, oh yeah, um, <laughs> and, and yeah, only five years old, and that's yeah, such, a, a shame. such a tragedy yeah. for him. But but that also came into the recording of this album, specifically the song "All My Love." Mm-hmm was influenced but then on the other other side of the coin is you've got jimmy page and john bonham um really starting to give in to their demons uh, yeah. at this point jimmy page was really succumbing to his heroin, heroin use yep. mm-hmm. um so that <clears throat> and as the driving force of the band that's not a good thing is it it's not I mean, he's the you know zeppelin is, is a guitar based band and when your guitar is at- well, there you go. I mean, it's well. We'll get there, of course. Well, yeah, but, no, we're uh, there now. Okay. Well, I mean, that's the go probably the biggest critique of this album is there's hardly any guitar. There's this very lackluster in guitar. I mean, you have some really some nice riffs, I think, in uh, in the evening. Yeah. But uh, uh, Paul, uh, John Paul Jones, and Robert Plant, they've kind of carried, and you could definitely tell. I mean, it's just it's so divided. I mean, even Bonham. I always thought that Bonham sounded great on this record. His yeah, drums I thought were this just... was a, what, in, in listening to this album. I feel that yeah. it's very drum forward, actually. Yeah, um, I mean it, it, the emphasis. Like, I guess, like I guess again on forward. on rhythm. Yeah, it because sounds like John Paul it. Jones stepped up and he really took. Yeah, and it sounds like he took the reins the to me too. I, it sounds so, you know like like Bonham is really like front and center. So I'm I'm really surprised when they say and they gave Page the actual credit to, for producing this record He's because he was probably, I think that was because he was hardly him. there pr- yeah. apparently he you know they I think they they said that they Plant and uh, John Paul Jones they were pretty much there all day Page would be late a lot of times they would do their stuff at night yeah. you know um, probably sleeping one off during the day or whatever whatever that you know yeah. yeah. 
or sleeping many yeah. off. Yeah, it, it was yeah. a very yeah. Uh, and and like like you just said, like like the first track on this album is in the evening, mm -hmm. and you're going to be fooled because <laughs> when you hear in the evening, you're like, okay, this is Zeppelin. Here comes the riff. Yeah, you know it, it's 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 got it's got that whole feel to it. But then the, the rest of the album kind of it starts to change because, yeah, the, the mm -hmm. necessity was the mother of invention. If you're lead guitarist and your riff creator is kind of struggling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John Paul Jones had this new toy. A synthesizer. Synthesizer. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and, you know, and so him and Robert Plant kind of kind of had this collaborative partnership. And, and you know what? We're going to we're going to fool around with this new toy and see what comes up. And yeah. Um, yeah. You know. I, I, don't, was, I don't think I've ever listened to this album all the way through. Like, yeah, I, I've listened to it in bits and pieces, and I certainly haven't listened to Carousel, Carousel Ambra. Car Carousel Ambra, yeah. Like in, <laughs> Carousel in, Ambra. In one shot, right? But that 10-minute yeah. song really is like the centerpiece of this album. Mm -hmm. like if you really yeah. want to get a get a feel for what 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 how how much they were willing to experiment. Yeah, Carousel Ambra is is it? It it is firmly in Prague territory. Yeah, yeah, I would. I mean, it well, is firmly in Prague territory. I, I, oh, sure. I, I've read. You know. uh, I forgot. I forgot where I read the article. I was trying to pull it up. Uh, I've heard. I in in other critics have have compared uh, this album to works from Genesis. I don't mm -hmm. hear it, and ELO. And I don't, and I don't hear that either. But I don't know if they were just grabbing out what they thought was proggy style groups. I think it's of, well, yeah. I think it's the employee of of the synthesizer at yeah. this point, especially at this point in time, yeah. in the late seventies, when these kinds of bands were being replaced by punk and a decidedly more raw sound was coming in, and and dare I say a, a more simpler sound were you yeah. know, started coming in into play as well, but. Uh, Pres Presence actually had that sort of. I always felt that that was their their attempt at prog at that on that album. But yeah, you're right. I mean, this this with the you know, it's easy to assume that that's the case with because he's playing around with a lot of keyboards and such. It has that stigma. Yeah, that one song, Carousel Ambra, is, is yeah. I mean, there's no yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Sure, yeah, you're right. It's, you know, it's got different sections to it, right? Like like yeah. a, like a good prog song does. It's got like different right. movements. Uh, it's got vocal. It, it, there's there's a lot to chew on in, on that song, and I I love it. It moves. It's like a catchy. It's an ass kicker. The, the it, riff it, is really catchy. It's like did, 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 this is you know, Zeppelin's. You know, like I dare. I mean, I was going to probably say this to the end, but I'll say it now. I mean, if this was their worst day, it's still better than a lot of the, <laughs> a lot. It's, it's a lot of the stuff that was out at the time. Yeah. I, I I you know I I think so. I, I, you know, I, you know. I, I really dug it. And 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 to your point, you're right. A lot of yeah. the, a lot of the critics at the time. We're saying, you know, there's this new, this new genre punk music, which is raw and all this, and and this album comes out and it makes Led Zeppelin look long in the tooth. It makes them look like what, like, like that they're vulnerable now. Before they were like yeah. unstoppable monsters of rock, have yeah. of the gods, and then this album comes out in the wake of that, right in '79, and it's kind of like, you know, right. you know, yeah. Some of the critics were kind of like, what, well, you know, hmm. Like really? Like this is this is what you've got? Yeah, it it's gotten, and I and and, and unfortunately, even now, I think it's still considered the, the the least favorite. Like if you look at any ranking list, this would yeah. probably be on the bottom. But it's got maybe it's got this, two of the either songs. this or Coda, but Coda is Coda doesn't count. It's just a leftover <laughs> yeah. album. It's not a real, you know. It's it, it was an afterthought. But this has two of the best songs ever from Led Zeppelin: "Fool in the Rain" and "All My Love." Yeah. Right. And they're the most unique sounding that, you know, they're the most they, they are, you know, with if you just listen to Zeppelin's greatest hits, they definitely mm -hmm. sound outside of it. They sound different. Right. And it, it's a matter. I mean, it's definitely a matter of, a t of taste. And right. you and I both love the idea of artists pushing boundaries yeah. and trying something new. And that's what they were doing. I mean, Plant especially. I, I if you look at Robert Plant and then the direction he started to take, um, I love the idea of him doing other, like exploring different facets of yeah. rock and roll, 
like boogie woogie yeah. and you know taking on a more of R and B approach. Got, you've got that like on, on Southbound Suarez on that on this album. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you've got you've you got know. the weird. You know, you've got the hokey hot dog. Almost is like yeah. To me, it's almost like almost a, a jazzy kind of yeah, like a like a old time. It's like a ragtime. It's a precursor. Yeah. Crazy little thing called love to me. Yeah. Like I almost yeah. Like, like I could hear Freddie Mercury hearing that and then coming up with crazy little thing called love. It's kind of like that mm-hmm. homage. Mm-hmm. Know, rockabilly 50s sound uh yeah and led zeppelin wasn't above they always had their had their kind of tongue planted firmly in their cheek they weren't afraid to do some of that goofy stuff right you know um but when you say that i mean with, with page i you know that side of the coin with page and bottom that's your heavy metal side yeah that's the side that's where under. people say that is why they are known as a heavy metal or the father of heavy metal <laughs> Because it's the side, because it's Jimmy Page with all those guitar, you know, t- techniques and all those things that he was doing with the bow and all this, you know, kind of stuff. But again, experimentation, though, right? Trying to get different sounds and you know that kind of thing. So that's what's. I mean, unfortunately, that's the big. My biggest critique of the album is that, and you know, I miss that. I miss that. That uh, you know how good this could have been if if he had been there. Um doing that along with what you know what they were bringing to the table so but unfortunately you know yeah you know what in in, in the spirit of you know when i was listening to um fool in the ring yeah right and and again when i when i kind of when we do these episodes i really kind of take off the the fan ears and put on the listening ears and listening to fool in the rain that that riff in the beginning Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that squarely could have been a guitar riff. That squarely could have been a page riff. You know, dun, 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 dun. yeah. And it's a keyboard. You know, like yeah. piano or whatever it is. But you know, so there, there's enough of the Zeppelin DNA that John Paul Jones lifted mm-hmm. for certain for certain things. You know, and and yeah, they say you know Jimmy Page is his guitar playing wasn't the sharpest at, at this point either. You know, yeah. if you the hot dog that you know it's kind of sloppy his riff playing on on that it's it's like yeah it's a little dicey you know so it it was it was it was fortuitous that they didn't decide to just rely on jimmy page no matter what shape he was in right Mm -hmm. it's good that that plant and jones said you know what we're gonna you know, we're, we're going to work together. We'll come up with some stuff. And like you said, there, it's not even, it's, it's not, it's not bad. I really like this album. So, but, but you're saying like on their worst day mm-hmm. and absolutely correct. You know? Yeah. This has a certain feel to it. Uh, and maybe, maybe it will appeal to someone that, that has, that doesn't like the riff heavy Led Zeppelin. Oh yeah. I don't like that stuff. It's just too, you know, too well, much. it appealed to me bit. at the age of what? Yeah. This is 11, 12 years old, it, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, all my love. And I mean, that was the song oh, yeah. that, that, that hooked me in I, uh, fool in the rain, that great, great drum pattern on that, on that song is one of my fa- all time favorite. Yeah. And his drums sound phenomenal, by the way, on that, on that song. And I just, and when he goes off, like when, when the, when the, when he blows the whistle and then it's just, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, then it brings in that sort of Latin thing flare going yeah. on. And it's like, wow. John Bonham's just not, you know, he's not just a rock and roll drummer playing a straight beat. Yeah, you he's know, not playing or four, a basher, four. you know, just a yeah. destroyer. He's got some, game. you know, he's doing something decidedly different here. And yeah, I, so I, I enjoyed that, you know. Which, which so. again, sh- forced them to show that they had some other skills, right? Because they, they did yeah. experiment with different different t- international textures mm-hmm. on this album, right? So, so, yeah, so to your point... Yeah, they could have just probably bashed and pounded their way through another Zeppelin release. Right. But instead, they're like, no, you know what? Let's let's take this opportunity uh, and and expand the thought process a little bit. Um, well, I think they're just, a, you know, it, it shows, I think at this point, Robert Plant kind of cleaned himself up. I mean, if he was ever mm-hmm. into really, I, I would, I don't think that he ever really went down too far to the bottom but uh, i'm sure he you know was there at some point you know yeah but at this point i think that him and john paul jones were said look we're professionals here we're musicians let's let's do something here let's let's save this because this isn't you know if they just like you say like if they just left it to that you know where page comes in and he just gives a half-assed performance that's not good enough we can't we can't you know we well, can't we, let that happen. Co- yeah, we need to. Yeah, yeah, or we need to cover for him. 
right? We need to cover which, for which them. We need able to, go, to whatever. Do. Yeah, yeah. Which we were able to do, which is right. You know, um, I mean, they're proficient enough in their in their skills to do that, or yeah. they have ideas. So we go, let's work around that. We don't let's let's not have such you know heavy guitar in this case. Let's do stuff like hot dog. Let's do. You know, let's, let's yeah. do a little bit of that boogie woogie piano, and and you yeah. know, and John let's Paul see what Jones we can do with that. To, John Paul Jones goes to town on the bass in, on this album too. Oh, by sure. the way, like, yeah. like you know, it, it's very, very underrated easy. bass player. Yeah, it's my, very yeah. easy to say, oh, this is keyboard heavy, and and it absolutely is. But it's not like he put the bass down or said, oh, I'm just going to mm-hmm. kind of do some basic, you know, uh, bass lines because I'm, I'm more concerned with the keyboards. Yeah, uh, he is fully, fully moving up and down the neck of the bass, and and fully coming out with some really nice bass lines on this album as well. So it's not, mm-hmm. uh, it's not like they're trying to divert your attention of hey, just look over here at the keyboards. Yeah, um, they're just using the keyboard as as an addendum or as a uh, an enhancement to what they were already doing. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah, Page is still there. There's plenty of guitar. There's plenty of solos. Fool in the Rain's got it, and uh, you know, all, you know, he's there. It's just not that bombast and those, you know, like, no, like Zeppelin too is like riff after riff after riff. He decided, I mean, I think the, the, the key, like I said before, the key is rhythm and a lot of rhythm heavy guitar in this guy, but he got, they kind of merged, like sort of blended that in the background. Mm-hmm. I think he's not as, you know, upfront about it. Yeah. And if he was playing sloppily, at the, even with rhythm guitar, you, you really couldn't tell because they yeah. kind of buried it in the mix. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bury it. <laughs> There it is. So yeah, yeah. and and page, and page has has been interviewed about his heroin use at the time, or you know, yeah. at, at this time and in, in the past. And and one interviewer had asked, "Hey, you know, do you regret? Do you regret it?" He goes, "No, absolutely." He goes, "I needed it." He mm. was like, "I needed it to kind of be on the top of my game. I needed it to to." In his words, it said he said it helped him focus. Yeah, which I happens. heroin has the opposite, <laughs> you know, effect. But I, I could be wrong. I don't have any experience with it. Well, but yeah, he, I mean, he, he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, you know, he says it was a, almost like a necessary evil. That yeah, he he doesn't regret what he was doing. He he said he felt he needed it. That it, that it kept him. And he's like, yeah, we we recorded that. You know, we we recorded in through the outdoor in like three weeks. Who else is going to do that? You know, and he goes. So yeah. he's kind of almost. Uh, but then he also famously goes on to say that it's he doesn't particularly care for this album either. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think he made a comment about uh, the album cover, which is brilliant, yeah. you know. And he was it's it's very it was a very expensive cover. Uh, they spent a lot of money on the marketing for this thing. It was, yeah. I thought it was great. I mean, wait for you know you did that brown paper packaging and the and you just open it up and you could actually it's almost like a watercolor kind of thing. Yeah, you could you, paint you, it. You could paint it if you got it wet. It would, you know, the colors would blend and, um, yeah, it was so great. It was really neat. Yeah. And hypnosis did the cover, by the way. Of course. Um, who, who, I think, what, what cover didn't they do in the seventies? Oh, there's, there, apparently there's a, a great documentary coming out about them. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know where, but um, but it's coming. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he said, yeah, the album cover was better than the album. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> so he's, he, it sounds like he's feeling a little butt hurt because he wasn't as involved, and you know, well, because he seems like he seems like is it a little bit of take a your lumps, man. His... You know, that's the thing. It's like, well, you, that's yeah. You know, they carried yeah. on, and and that's you know could probably cause some tension, I'm sure, and yeah. you know, and of course they're still reeling from the unfortunate death of John Bonham, which wasn't too long after. Yeah. In fact, I think they didn't. The album came out three weeks after he died. Yeah, I'm not, not, not long. Yeah. Not long yeah. after. So right. before we get to that, I've got another yeah. trivia question for you. All right. Do you know where this album was recorded? Yes, I do. Polar Studios. And what is Polar Studios known? Abba. For? That's that studio. is the studio founded yep. by Bjorn Ulvaeus and yep. Benny Anderson and Stig Anderson. Yep. Uh, of Abba. That is their record. Polar Studios is, is their recording studio. Mm-hmm. So a very interesting change of venue as well. Yeah, a very um, popular. It venue. would have been neat. I, I couldn't find anything, but it would have been neat to find out if like somebody from ABBA, like even if if like Benny pay, played like a keyboard or something, uh, like right? it would be a great just, bit of just on a session, or yeah, even just watching them, you know, coming in and just yeah, yeah doing just stuff. like uncredited, you know, because ABBA is is the pinnacle of pop well, music. You, you never know. Especially Maybe in seventy nine, yeah. they were on top of the world, and so for Led Zeppelin to be coming in and recording their album, sure, um, 
it would be like one of those like the best team up like zeppelin and abba yeah would have been insane <laughs> would have been insane <laughs> so let, Leo, let's talk about about a little bit about the aftermath of this um yeah so an, another you know another drummer right mm. you know Keith, the who lost keith moon mm. before this uh yeah to alcoholism uh excessive partying um john Bonham actually, was, he, was he, he died taking on the it's sad but he was he died actually taking overdose of the medication he was taking to combat his alcoholism huh? which is blows my mind but yeah, notoriously that's... you know uh Keith Moon, I think, hired a bunch. I think I don't know if it was in New York City or Chicago or somewhere. Uh, he hired, he paid a whole bunch of cab drivers um, to block off one side of each block at the hotel he was staying, so he could he could destroy it and throw everything out the window. Um, <laughs> so he hired a bunch of cabs to block the the street, so no traffic <laughs> could come down. So he wanted to party hard, hard, but do it safely. Yeah. But but John Bonham was of the same cut. Uh, yeah. The same yeah. thing, hard drinking, hard living. Uh, it just seems like these, you know, in, in, in the seventies, that excess was there. Mm -hmm. um, certain people made it out and, and certain people didn't. Now this, you know, the album, the, when, when plant was talking about this album in through the outdoor, he said, well, this is the, this was kind of like the springboard mm -hmm. for what could have been right. And then Bonham dies and, and the, and Led Zeppelin says, that's it. We're just cashing out. Yeah. Do, I, do I, you th let me ask you. Do, I mean, do you think that Zeppelin would have made it into the 80s? Was Zeppelin meant to be a creature of the 70s? Were they meant to give us the stuff that was of that time and not try to morph, I, you know? Well, what would have happened if they morphed into the 80s? Would it have been like, yes. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Honest, I, I, I do know what you're saying. I, I Are we better off? Are we better off with Zeppelin? Not with I John Bonham so. dying, but are we better off with Zeppelin choosing not to continue? A la The Who with Kenny Jones. I, they're, you know, You Better You Bet and Eminent right. Front. That's great stuff. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, it's a, deci it's, a, it's a much different sound. Um, one that I think purists were not too happy with. But I, you know, but... I think people are more kind about those albums now. Um, I think Plant wanted to go. It's like I said before. I think he was trying to explore. Look at what he did in the eighties with the the Honey Drippers and huh. just exploring that old time music. And and, and again, going back to the his, old his time rock and roll. Work. His old solo huh. solo work was, I think, decidedly sounded and... very very similar to this album i think yeah. this could have been the precursor of what he did on those first two records bringing in phil collins with that tremendous drum sound yeah. that he had at that point was a you know he thought well if anybody sounds like bonham at this point with those you know really heavy drums let's get phil on on this and and, and you know that's what happened there but um so do you, do you i mean yeah, do you think I, that would since page was so quote unquote, we're not, I want to make it sound like page. Wasn't I think there. he, I think but, honestly but since in his, in his absence, do you think that page would have stood for kind of a, almost a mutiny, right? Cause that's, you know, this album wasn't a mutiny. It was page was, was not present enough. Mm. So the other band members took the helm. They didn't right. say we're, we're resting control of the group, right? but it put them on a new path, decidedly a new path. And, and plan had said, this was a, this could have been a springboard for what could have been. Would do you think Page would have come up been like, well, no, you know, I'm, you know, he would have been the, the the difficult one for sure. He would have been the one to say, you know, I don't like this, I don't like that. I mean, he started doing some stuff, didn't go anywhere. The firm, all this kind of thing. He I even like Jan with Chris Squire and Alan White of Yes. At one point, they were do they were going to do something, and then that that fizzled out. Uh, so I think the idea of him trying to explore different things with, with a lot of the mu uh, musicians, his peers of the time, uh, I, but I, I see it more as a kind of a desperation, a struggle to kind of just stay relevant and try yeah. to do something. Because yeah, he you know, did that page, page Coverdale project. Right, right. And, 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 and none of it worked. Been, none of it yeah. just really, you know. Yeah, so I, I you know. 
Plant at least had a, a sem- I, you know, had a pretty decent solo career. I mean, look at all the mm-hmm. solo albums he put out, and he just and he just wanted. He wasn't afraid to go there to do something a little bit more in tune with the eighties. Uh-huh. You think of like in the mood from did, principal did, of moments. Did, do you with think? That, do you think Plant you know, peaked with Now and Zen? Uh, that was for that for that era of music. It was a good album for sure. It was a great album, you know? but because that's when he embraced yeah. like his Zeppelin. Before he that, worked. he was kind of deny not denying his Zeppelin heritage, but he was actively trying not to. Yeah, uh, he was just the cool, the tall cool be, one. Be, be caught up in it, but when you know? Now and Zen comes out, then he kind of, you know, tall cool one has all the sampling and, and all that's the, all the He wrote it. I mean, that that's a perfect, perfect way to describe him. That's you know, I think you know, I don't know what it is, but he just had that knack of being, you know, you know, just sort of. Uh, exuding that that st- he still had that sexual presence that oh yeah you know, absolutely. sex appeal and even with his solo work and, and people oh. love that you know it, it just yeah. uh, he's one of he's one of rocks rock uh, rocks icons yeah so uh, the long hair the, the like the vest with with no shirt underneath or just no shirt I think he you know the and, free spirit yeah. nature of Robert Plant is what really for me is what I love about him. He's not not afraid to go there. Now he's doing decidedly like more folk rock type stuff. He's doing Zeppelin songs, but more of an acoustic sound, putting together these sort of like impromptu bands that are, you know, with a lot of banjo and mandolin and that kind of thing, sort of the indie, you know, folk thing going on. But I, 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 I like it though. I think it's great. Alison Krauss, he of reminds me. He know. reminds me of Gandalf now. <laughs> he's starting to look like Ian McKellen in Lord of the Rings. Like he, the way he's like kind of hunched. Well, like disp- he like kind hey. of dispenses this wizard wizardly wisdom now. Well, there and- you go, man. I mean, th- he was always quoting <laughs> Tolkien anyway in Zeppelin. So why not? You know, even in All My Love, he's he's he's, yeah. he's, he's quoting Tolkien. But now he kind of so, looks like Gandalf. Yeah, of like, course. You know, yeah, he's got the long string. Actually, he looks more like like Saruman. He's like the stringy hair. <laughs> it's always yeah. like like it looks like this like the, the type of product really in it or weathered something. face. Yeah, you know, the must- but he's still rocking that must- hair, man. He's still you know yeah, still doing it. But uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, yeah he- I, I don't know. I, I it it is one of the great what ifs, you know. Yeah, because we we did we because with the who we did find out what would happen. They they decided yeah. to soldier on and they got Kenny Jones and they. Uh, you know, had a, had a couple of more releases and they figured, said, yeah, we're going to continue. Right. Um, Zeppelin just, you know, they would reform for charities, you know, Nebworth and, and Live Aid, but that's live. It's not mm-hmm. let's, and there was a page in plant. There was no quarter. I mean, there was some, some stuff, but it wasn't Zeppelin. It wasn't, here's a Zeppelin proper release with the three of us. And then we'll right. get a drummer or, or, you know, we'd have to add a member. Mm-hmm. Um, Although Jason Bottom is quite formidable uh, in his own sure. way, um, <clears throat> yeah. But I, you know what? I, I guess, I guess Led Zeppelin was meant to be a creature of the late '60s and early '70s. Like that was their stomping ground, kind of like a. Yeah. I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but kind of like the dinosaurs when the dinosaurs ruled the Earth. Yeah, they were the well, monsters. I, they were the kings of the planet. They, I kind of like that though. All right. Yeah, I, I kind of love 70s, that. In the seventies, yeah, that's that's what like like Zeppelin. That's that was their that was their age, like the Ice mm-hmm. Age. Like that was the age of Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. Was the seventies, and here's you know, and 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 maybe to their credit, they didn't shit on on their their legacy. No, they did not. Trying and... to reform in nineteen ninety nine. You know, <clears throat> Zeppelin ninety. And we're gonna get you know yeah uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna guy, bring you know, out an army of musicians to back us yeah. up and and do you know no it, I would like to see that as a show but not as a, not as a recording thing right. you know um, and write and sometimes like be careful what you ask for because you might get it and everyone kind of yearned yeah for Zeppelin to reform but do you really want it you know because no. um, they were part of that of the of the sound of the seventies they what they, you they got, cemented yeah, what that, you got yeah. is like untouchable all you can do is influence others and i you uh, know now we have right. people like jack and, and white as we, as we said greta van fleet in our in our yeah. zeppelin two episode they're still that's right they're still mining the uh, just the do zeppelin. just do that man just influence others to do to carry that torch um yeah. is and but make it better if, yeah. if you can you know yeah, it's kind of like a moment <laughs> you know like like almost, almost like the beatles like a moment in time for yeah. these four people to 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 go launch into the 70s and really Plant the flag, mm-hmm. not, no pun intended. Plant, plant the flag for rock and for hard rock to re, you know to yeah. to really um, create that subgenre of hard rock. That's right. Yeah, 
and you know, you when you think about it, and, and we talked about and, it, I think in, in our you, you can't think of. you can't think of the seventies and people the way they dressed, the way they looked. And Zeppelin definitely had an influence on that. The long curly hair, the 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 open shirts, the you know that was the the bell bottom jeans. You know that yeah. was the, a very distinct look. Um, I think I think like it cut across grunge, all it was like fla- flannel shirts and things like yeah, but it, but that was like their. I think yeah. they, they owned that. You know, they had yeah. that. I mean, it was yeah. And, and I think no matter what scarves and the, you know, like Paige with the scarves yeah. and the, the, you know, he'd wear a sport jacket and like a velvet sport jacket, and it was just yeah. Like Aerosmith would carry yeah. that forward, right? The, yeah, the, the, and, the and fashion. I think I think no matter what genre of music you liked, yeah, Zeppelin was there. Like like Zeppelin was kind of like that was mm-hmm. the common denominator. Even if you liked kind of Southern rock and Skinner and that kind of stuff, I think yeah. those people still liked Zeppelin. Like you could still find something. Oh, yeah. And then the people that liked, you know, pop music were still like, yeah, oh, Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love, Stairway, you know, I love Stairway to Heaven. So there was, there was something for everyone across the genres, that, but, yeah. but, but Zeppelin kind of carried that hard rock. Like you said, that FM album oriented rock. Yeah. Uh, genre forward. Cause they weren't <coughs> hit makers like that. They weren't number one hit makers, which but their songs the are undeniably, undeniably recognizable. We're, 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 it begs the question though. So why were you not the biggest Led Zeppelin fans then on the planet? If we're, you know, we're singing there. Um, I mean, it occurred to me that we, well, we did I the same we thing in Zeppelin that. too, man. We we're, we're just like, they can't yeah. do no wrong. They've never made a bad album. You because, could argue because some I, are better because than you others. know what? Because you you go on different trips in your life, right? So yeah. when when you when you're on your Beatles thing, yeah, it, there's nothing else. There's all be you know they are the influence. They're the wellspring. They're the greatest thing that ever happened. You know, like you kind of go through those, right? Just like you with Clapton, like you consu- you know when you were That's into right. Clapton, you were consuming everything Clapton, and there really wasn't oxygen. Yeah, for any and you self admittedly right during the ninety, right. you listening, you know, so so That's we right. don't we don't allow ourselves. Because we're like a dog, like oh, I, I got to get everything about this. I got, you know, I got to yeah, right. find a new. That's band. how we. That's how we. That's how we rolled. <laughs> yeah, so, so that means that means something else. That means other music and, and other things have to go by the wayside. Now yeah. you either, either never, never get into them, mm-hmm. or they they may be the next band, or they might be two, three, or five bands down the road that eventually you get into them. Right. So, so maybe yeah. at the time when Zeppelin was at their pinnacle in 79, I certainly, I was listening to pop music. So I certainly wasn't prepared or eager to listen to Led Zeppelin, although mm-hmm. I was aware of those riffs, you know, cause you would hear them on FM radio. And, and, God, and like yeah. you had said too, you kind of take it for granted that you hear this stuff. That's right. So yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. Zeppelin. I know Zeppelin. Yeah. You know, I know those. I stay away to heaven. It's always number one when they do the, the Memorial day weekend, or, you know, like, it's kind of like, yeah, it's, it's those things that are there. Mm-hmm. So then you get into something else and then you, and then you find out who that influence was from Clapton and then you go further back. So before you know it, you're down a rabbit hole of something else. And there's these other bands that are still kind of yeah. waiting yeah. that you don't get to, or but you it's might nice get to, to know the that road. they are, they are your backup, right? They are there to fall back on and say, "Hey, man." For some people, they're everything, right? So let's go. Let's like, swim in that pool, man. I, yeah. I'm here. I'm here to hang out and do some Zeppelin for. for oh, for absolutely! Six months. <laughs> you yeah, know, I'm mean, just you know, hard rock. Yeah, and you, and you put on a Zeppelin oh, yeah. album. No one's gonna, no one's gonna complain. But yeah. ju- and just like the people that are hardcore into Zeppelin, maybe they never got into Chicago or the right. Beach Boys, right? And right, yeah, you know, and and. It's like, well, oh yeah, well, Zeppelin doesn't sound like the Beach Boys. Well, no, they don't. But I'm into both, mm-hmm. you know. And it's just where it's just the where where your mind is at at the time, you know. And when you're yeah. ready to to oh, and that's the beauty of music is when you're ready to kind of open yourself up to it. It's it's there and it's waiting for you. Yeah, you know, it's kind of Absolutely. and then you could yeah. just di- then you dive into that rabbit hole and you go down it, right? You know, and you and you just enjoy it and you you add that to your to your arsenal. Mm-hmm. of music that you really love and, and kind of, you know, you add that to your, your, your kind of back catalog of stuff that you enjoy. And that, yeah. that's one of the reasons why this, why doing these episodes are so great because it is, we, we, we get can, to kind we, of acknowledge it, you know, we get right. to, or, or come or come clean about it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, which is fine too. Right. It's, you know, that, that, yeah, I hadn't given this album full, full listens, but when I did starting this past Friday, that's all I've been listening to. 
Caris mm-hmm. Alhambra. I'm like, God, <laughs> it's so quirky. It's so strange. It's so weird. And it's so catchy. <laughs> and it's yeah. so listenable. And it's so unzeppelin. Yeah. That uh, that I'm like, wow, it's not just the ocean and it's not just custard pie and it's not mm-hmm. just the riff. You know, here here's here's the story of a band who needed to kind of kind of kind of find it within them to to complete this project without their fearless leader. Yeah. You know, the guy who has provided the the, the basically the meal ticket Zeppelin is riffs. All yeah. riffs all the time, pretty much. And, and bombast. And this mm-hmm. album is decidedly not bombastic. Which doesn't de- which doesn't de- doesn't demean the drumming. The drumming is is solid and it's there and it's present. It's I think it's, it's bombastic not... in a different way. Yeah, you know, synthesizer always gets a bad. It's, ambiti- it's ambitious. It it always gets and rock and when it comes to rock and roll, synthesizer. I mean, look at look at nineteen eighty four, right? With jump. I mean, yeah. but that's the song, man. That 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 keyboard is like that people were losing it, losing their shit. Oh, Eddie Van Halen, he's going, going, you know, yeah, playing the keyboard. Like uh, you know, Getty Lee using synthesizer with Rush. Right. I mean, they would decide they. This was stuff that they were supposed to be using in the in the early seventies because that's when it was like when prog was the thing, right? This was like the main instrument, and then for bands like that to to actually embrace it in the eighties was was uh, was was weird. But then again, everybody was using it at that point, you know, so it didn't yeah, really. It was, it was almost a necessity. It was almost it's a necessity. Like have, and, it, you know, we we have to adapt. But it, but but also a, a band like Rush also, like, I think we're decidedly a little bit different, a cut above the the some of the other bands that were trying mm-hmm. that. And I think I I, I I I hate to say it, but I think Zeppelin would have been one of those bands that just didn't quite weren't able to do it weren't yeah. able to kind of you know especially it could, you know, when you it would have worn out its welcome let's put it that way you know well here's the thing right and 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 that's a really good point is this is uh this album is made with limited input from jimmy page right yeah he's there he's certainly there and he's you know again listen listen to in the evening and page is fully present mm-hmm. um but but yeah, if you try to make another album with now Page and I mean Plant and Jones on this trip, and P- Page fully powered up, it's not going to work because it's going to clash. It's going to it's it, you know how are we going to find the the medium mm-hmm. and what does the happy medium sound like? Does it sound like shit on? But it doesn't sound not like <laughs> Zeppelin and not like not yep. like Into the Outdoor. What what would that mix be? What would the compromise be? You know, because this was almost made at not as a this isn't really a compromise album. It's kind of a substitute. You know, here here's mm-hmm. what we're going to do um, because we need to. Mm-hmm. You know, this wasn't a fully collaborative thing of, yeah, hey, let's do this. And, and Paige had ideas about it. Right. <clears throat> they knew so they you weren't go, making you go into their... another album doing that. What, what are you going to get? Right. They knew they weren't making another Zeppelin four at this point. Yeah. You know, they kind of like you know, it's run its course. You know, who are you is the same kind of thing. It's like very synth heavy, heavy on that on album. Who are you might arguably be the best song on the record, the hardest rocking song. Yeah. Uh, but Townsend would employ a lot of that, but a lot of that weird, like just like flowing kind of keyboards, going look, 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 look. like he was one going nuts with that thing. But here it's like, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it. Let's keep the rhythm. Let's, yeah. uh, but but it's effective. And and yeah, you're right. I think it, you know it was meant to kind of replace. A lot of those, a lot of that guitar that would have been there had Page. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, uh, that's the way I was trying so, to think about some of these songs. I'm like, well, yeah. what if this was, what if this wasn't a keyboard and it was a guitar? Yeah, like that's what I was trying. That's how I was trying to challenge myself, and that's where, um, like fool. That's where Fool in the Rain came in. I'm like, yeah, I could, mm-hmm. you know, I could almost hear this as a guitar centric. Yeah. song you know like that so so you know i think i think jones and, and more probably more so jones was trying to also use the formula yeah that was there also to make it sound somewhat familiar so it doesn't sound so much like yeah this is a total here's a total left turn into unknown territory you and, know like like fool in the rain sounds enough like a zeppelin song Mm-hmm. But with keyboards, you know, all of my love does not sound like like it sounds more like a fully formed rock song by a different band. Um, but that's not a bad thing either, right? Because because and and Plant was more of a singer, and and that was more of a fully realized song as as opposed to a song built around a riff, 
which is decidedly you know. more like what the eighties would be, right? Rock yeah. and roll. That's what it would be like ballad, power ballads and um, yeah. that kind of thing, you know? And, and you mentioned his voice and I have to bring that up is I love pay. Uh, I love plan at this point. Yeah. His voice is decided it's a lot smoother. It's uh Oh yeah, he wasn't uh, howling, and there was a, a lower register. But when he did, right. you know, sing the high parts, his voice was stronger. It wasn't as like fractured and like, and he's like ble- almost like a bleeding throat yeah. sound. Like here, it's like it, it was a lot smoother. It was a lot, yeah. you know, the L- tenure less, of his less, voice, less was... of the bluesy howl and growl and yeah. Bluesy, but decidedly, bluesy vocal but when you when you when you mention bluesy, it's warmer. It's it, yeah. it, you know, he could actually sing that stuff now like you, you yeah. know like i said with the honey drippers you can go and and do like an elvis kind of like you know down to that register of him uh, like you know that kind of yep. thing instead of that you know that whiny you know which is you know <laughs> was great at the time for it served its purpose for what it was it with, wouldn't have worked you know, it wouldn't have worked with this type of music that's the thing is is yeah and of course this type of music required, changed, required vocals you know, to match yeah. the elegance yes of, right. of the music or the ambition of the music. So he's, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say he's more of a crooner, but he's more of a, he's more singing songs in, in this. Yeah. It's more like, like the, the singing is part and parcel and not the vocal acro- acrobatics that, you know, yeah. immigrant song and the stuff that, that, that plant can do is great to have in the arsenal. But sometimes just being a singer is even harder. You know, yeah. sometimes it's easy to growl and grunt and, and moan through songs. And do the rock and roll thing, the rock yeah. star thing. It, you don't yeah. need to, but, you but don't even album, need to album, go it, there. Yeah. yeah, this album didn't require that. This album required yeah. some singing to kind of, again, you're, you're trying to make up for, for someone that's not there. So you need right. you need some extra tricks, you know, in the in the, in the the bag. Um, and that's what makes this album so I- interesting. And it's real, it real, it's short, relatively short. You know, like I said, we've got Carol Salambra, which is, 10 minutes and it really centers the album um but but it's 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 even at 10 minutes that song is just infinitely listenable i I don't think it's a problem for someone to kind of put this on um because you've got you've got oh you've also got you know fool in the rain and all my love kind of bookending that song as well so if you're kind of there for the hits you're going to get one you know kind of listen listen to this really epic (laughs) epic song which i think was titled the epic in the beginning Mm -hmm. it's the working title for it and then you've then you've got all my love. So, so there's enough there to chew on. And then of course mm-hmm. I'm going to crawl, you know, so there, there's Zeppelin is there, you know? Yeah. Um, they're just a little different. Maybe they're a little sleeker. Right. This is like that, a sleeker version of Zeppelin. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think instead of synthesizer there, I mean, it's like, especially on a, I'm going to crawl um, that you think that song could have benefited more from a string section? Had they employed a full on string section to come it, in, it would have been, it would have been, it probably would have been a reach. It probably would have been a, a bridge too far for them to go to. Yeah. You know, because I think they, they, prob- they probably, probably really, using yeah. the synthesizer is kind of like, a, you know, a pay, you know, I'm, I'm guessing Paige might have been like, all right, this is just. And I think that's where the ELO comparison mm-hmm. comes in is that they're doing these sort of flowing. Yeah kind of passages, right? But it's emulated on a keyboard yep. instead of, you know, doing that. Um, but yeah, you know, but I could, I could definitely see them doing that now with, like I said, like yeah, a with full the, on yeah. orchestra and that kind of thing. So happening. Yeah. Like, did you see the Kennedy? I, I think we talked about that. The Kennedy center honors with mm-hmm. when they did stairway to heaven, when Hart did it and Paige is fucking crying and yeah. plant is yeah. crying. They're all crying <laughs> because, because it was an orchestrated version, like and, it, and kind Wilson of realizing just, it, it, like, oh, yeah. like reimagining it at, in its, in its majesty, not That's as right. this hard rock song, but in, as a majestic, as it was of, probably meant to be, as like what they probably envisioned it to be, uh, but just didn't, you know. Yeah, because it would keep cutting. It would keep cutting away, and like like plants' eyes are like welling up, and Jimmy Page is you know, with, the, <laughs> the, the, with the hair. He looks like Sean Connery in, in, in Highlander with the hair pulled back and the. But that, but a big, but again, <laughs> it's, is that because they would they have lost an audience as a result of that back in the day, like doing those kinds of things, trying. Uh, would they, oh they oh they just went decidedly you know what, what's the string stuff and you know like I, think, I think the pressure would have been on to embrace all that technology the drum yeah. you know everybody like we said everybody was do, everybody that was was vital or vibrant in the seventies in the eighties mm-hmm. 
for the most part, didn't like we said, the stones were the only ones because they didn't give a shit and they were just doing the same <laughs> thing. Any like they were, they didn't really try to, you know, change anything. Right. You mm-hmm. know, the, the, with this album, the Zeppelin was on the cusp of something different. Yeah. You know, so, so was this going to translate into, you know, cause they were certainly well ahead of the curve in 79 mm-hmm. with this. Um, I, I, but, but again, we, we know that the, the sound got glossier, the production got, shinier mm-hmm. i don't know if i you know if you listen to like if you listen to heaven no uh, to heaven knows to to now and zen it's got that 80s it's got that 80s feel to oh, it it's got no that doubt. 80s yeah. mm-hmm. that that fake electric piano type sound which is okay but that's good for a solo thing yeah. i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to hear a, a band develop into that who is who's got the moniker of being exactly the father of heavy metal to have exactly. it, you know. like you wouldn't want to see them so so in a lot of cases like like I said it's not good that Bonham died but it's good that 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 this was a uh, an icon of the seventies and left there yeah you know yeah. and like I said this way nothing was uh, there was no chance to really make a bad move right but I think other people have done it. You think of like Metallica when they went full on with an orchestra. They made that. I think it was a live record that they made. But by then know. it was kind of cool. Back it was back cool. in the eighties, it, was, it, was like it would have been thing. like, "What the hell is this? They're they're yeah. selling out. This is crappy. This is pop." Yeah. You know, the critics were ready to savage people over anything different. Mm-hmm. You know, and especially and, and again, the, the, they were circling. You know, the critics were circling the wagons around this album. You know, without a yeah. doubt. So, um, well, it falls into that unfortunate those unfortunate years like the late seventies where what do we do now? They're probably saying like, we're, you know, this is it, man. We're at the, you know, we're hearing all this different stuff. Now, what do we do? Yeah. yeah <laughs> to, do we, do we you know, stay, do we stay the course or stay do the we course? Try and, so we, do we try, try something relevant? new? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't imagine how difficult that must've been for some of these artists to, to we, have we've to seen make them those try changes. And fail. Man, yeah. Most yep. of them, ha- most of the stuff that we like, they they've pretty much tried and failed, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. They, like again, we bring up I bring up Kilroy was here all the time. Is you know like oh god yeah like swing it swing <laughs> like really swinging for the an, an earnest attempt right really swinging yeah. for the fences, um right. but it, but it's just not landing the right way you know and now it's like a flawed masterpiece now again they're not writing it then to say hopefully in forty years people will like this no they're writing it then to be current and to try and capture that audience um and making those decisions just like 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 eminence front and and like with it's hard you know they're they're trying to kind of still you know the who is still trying to be the who but kind of be current who you know yeah. and what does current who look like yeah who, who knows to you who, <laughs> who know right we, we don't no, know but, so but it was not is, a, is, a, is yeah, better left a, he that. had that uh he had that ability to uh to look ahead though, I think, yeah. and, and just to, and to know, like you better, you bet to me sounds like a mod, a ver- uh, like an eighties mod song. Yeah. If you consider like, their, if you consider their early work, mm-hmm. it, to me, it sounds, you know, the most definite, what the, what, 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 if the mods were still around in the eighties, this is what, it, what that would sound like. Yeah. Cause it was yeah. poppy. It was, you yeah. know, so a yeah. Great, great, great vocal by Daltrey too. Yeah. Yeah. And Kenny Jones, he's no slouch. I'm, I'm a, I'm a Kenny Jones. I, no, I, he's, Kenny he was great. Kenny. Maybe not, the right fit for the who, but you know, but it, close you enough, know. close <laughs> enough. But anyway, yeah. We so, so yeah, I, I think this is a, you know, we talked a lot about the, the uniqueness of this album. So if you're going to go listen to it, really understand that. Yeah. You're not hearing whole lot of love. You're not hearing heartbreaker. You're not hearing over the hills and far away. Um, yeah. That, that is a part of Zeppelin's legacy, but just like this is also, this was like that, this was almost like a cocoon that were, they were going into. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, and had, had they continued, what would it have been? We don't know. Um, yeah. But it was fun to speculate. It was fun to talk about it and kind of speculate where they would yeah. la- land in the 80s. Because we've seen you know, a lot of those, like I said, a lot of those groups we, we like try, tried and failed. Or some of the groups specifically like Asia 
said, well, we need a gimmick. We need to kind of come together and make pop music. Like, like, cause the prog thing ain't working. That's true. So let's see if we can make really poppy proggy music. Right. So, yeah, so decidedly it, more AOR, like, so yeah, there was a lot you know. of dubious decision-making yeah. going mm-hmm. on in that time because these people needed to capture an audience or stay relevant. You know, that, yeah. that kind of seventies pot smoking, you know, black light era had kind of gone come and gone and and in in the 80s things were clean lines and neon and fluorescent and yeah and 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 sharp looking and it's like how do these bands that were long-haired scruffy dirty teeth how do they transition into this new frontier of of music and and you know you got people you know then you got groups like asia trying to and then you got gtr and they were all trying to put put something together (laughs) yeah right to to try and like can't get get in on some of this stuff Mm-hmm. When the heart rules the mind, was that GTR? When the so, uh, heart yeah. rules the mind, was it Max yeah. Bacon? <laughs> was that the lead singer of GTR? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Good lord, there was so Bacon? many, so many of them. There was Emerson, Lake, and Powell. There yeah. was, yeah. So we're better uh, yeah. off. We're, we're better. You know, I think we're better for not knowing that the yeah. answer to that. Because I'd rather not know the answer than have the answer be a really shitty answer and know it. Yeah. I think because then you'd be like, oh, this is the because then we'd be saying on this episode, we'd be saying, here's where they should have stopped. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's the kind of episode this would have been. So, yeah, but but been, instead, you know. this is a, a, a uh, I'm going to use the bell because it's corny, but this is their swan song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and swan song yeah. is the label that Led Zeppelin created. Yeah. For those that didn't know. But, um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it. This, this is one to really. uh Really give a listen for it's it's a quick in and out album. It's in through the outdoor, and the reason why they called the album in through the outdoor is because they were you know, because of the 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 problems with with you know obviously morning plant sun. Um, Zeppelin was were tax exiles at the time, so they didn't they they didn't want to be paying the exorbitant taxes that you had to, had to, to to live in Britain, so they couldn't tour for two years. So their their concern is like, and they hadn't made an album since seventy six, so they were trying to get back into the public eye and they felt all these obstacles that were being thrown their way was, was like trying to go in through the outdoor because everyone's mm-hmm. coming out and it keeps pushing you back and you can't get, get there. Yeah. So that's actually what the album title refers to is them just trying to get back into the public eye again, after all these obstacles that they, uh, that they encountered. So mm-hmm. there it is. There we'll it we'll is. end it with that nugget. There you go. <laughs> of tree of tree via. All right. All righty. Yes. Uh, we didn't say it in the beginning, but go ahead and, and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We're there. Uh, you can join our group and, and post and be a part of the conversation, be part of, of, of this great group of friends we have. If you're watching us on YouTube and you've made it this far, just go ahead and just hit the subscribe button. And then next to it right there is the like button. So hit that one as well. And that'll do a, that'll help us really grow our channel as well. Um, because we've got the video content uh, there. And then, of course, we've got our, our audio content and our social media arm. This is like a little mini empire. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, we've a very it, that small. Is... It's like a more like a Hamlet empire. It's not an empire. It's like a Hamlet. It's grown, or, though. Or a burg, a small it's, town. It's considerable. <laughs> it's no slouch. <laughs> yes, we're, none of us are slouches, but no. That's going to do it for this. So, so go check out from 1979 into through the outdoor from Led Zeppelin, their their final studio release. There will be plenty of uh, a thousand and one compilations after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no shortage of those. Uh, that definitive four CD box set was really what got me into them, but which came out much much later. But um, go check them out. Everything's available on Spotify as well. So for Eric, this has been Dean. We will see you on the flip side. You've been listening to the 3324 podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important. So make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 